Christopher Parker once said, Procrastination is like a credit card. It's a lot of fun until you get the bill. A warm welcome to everyone present here. Today, I'd like to address a prominent problem in our day-to-day -day lives. Procrastination. To put it simply, procrastination is nothing but putting off a task that requires completion. So if we look at it this way, this fancy word describes a very annoying roadblock that most of us face in the way of having a productive and efficient day. So the question is, is overcoming this so very tempting habit possible? Well, I've done a little bit of digging and I found out that this feat is nowhere near as impossible as we think. And don't worry, I'll give you a few tips on how you can get there easily. But first, it is of immense importance that I mention this. I, like most people, am still trying to overcome my procrastination. Let me give you an example. Once upon a time, my parents decided to buy me a mechanical toothbrush. So how this works is you pop in two AA batteries, press a button and the toothbrush starts to vibrate. The only manual effort you have to put in is putting the toothpaste on the brush and moving it around your mouth. Unfortunately, two weeks after I started using this incredible invention, it stopped working. However, it was an easy fix. All I had to do was to change the batteries and it would have been as good as new. But the morning it stopped working, I told myself that I was really not in the mood to do something as meticulous and as energy draining as changing batteries. So I procrastinated used it as a regular toothbrush and promised myself I would change the batteries in the evening. To absolutely no one's surprise, I forgot about it in the evening and that night before getting ready for bed, once again I managed to put off this task and use it as a regular toothbrush for the second time. Now, I'm not exactly beaming with pride to say this next part, but this cycle continued for three more weeks and now, thanks to my procrastination, my toothbrush has an identity crisis. It believes that it's a regular toothbrush with a bulkier handle. This leaves us with two questions. Why do we procrastinate? And much more importantly, how can we get rid of this habit? Well, the first thing to do is find out what triggers your procrastination. According to Tim Peichel, author of Solving the Procrastination Puzzle, there are a few traits that make a task procrastination worthy. So if you put off a task, it probably means that you find it boring, frustrating, difficult, ambiguous, not intrinsically rewarding. That is, you don't find the process fun, meaningless, and so on. Neurologically speaking, the logical side of your brain has absolutely no say in procrastination. It's all the work of the emotional side of your brain. These triggers which I just mentioned, they make the emotional side of your brain not want to do the task at hand. But fortunately for us, tip number one tells us exactly how we can use this weakness to our advantage. It's simple. All you have to do is reverse the triggers. Now let's suppose that you have to do a project for your least favorite subject. An average person would find this task boring, frustrating, and difficult. So what do you do? Turn it into a game. How many words can you crank out in half an hour? Or how much of the project can you finish before your favorite TV show comes on? By turning this task into something enjoyable, you're sort of distracting your brain from the fact that you're doing something that you'd normally despise. The second tip is to work within your resistance level. To find this, just imagine the amount of effort that you're willing to commit to a task along a sliding scale. Now, in the case of the project, if you told yourself that you would research on this for two hours straight, it's quite obvious that you'd resist and put it off. But if you reduce the duration of your research sessions to something that's both tolerable and practical, then you'll do just fine. The third tip I have recently discovered is my Achilles heel, is to just get started. The thing is that if you manage to get over your fear of the task for even one second, then use that second to get started on the task somehow. In our example, this might mean searching for sites and articles to reference or finding authors whose books may prove helpful. The psychology behind this is that by doing even these little things, you've started the project. And as humans, we do have a tendency to exaggerate how bad things are in our mind. So when we finally get started on doing it, we realize that it's nowhere near the state in which we assumed. The last tip is simple and straightforward. It's to remove any and all distractions. 
Now let's take a minute to be honest. Nowadays, our biggest distractions are our electronic devices. But considering that a lot of our work is also dependent on these devices, in my opinion, the most practical way to go about this is to temporarily block access to sites that may distract you. But if this doesn't work, and take a deep breath, gather every ounce of courage you've got, and unplug completely. No, I'm not insane. I do not require a psychologist. I myself feel very strange and uncomfortable when I shut off my laptop to concentrate. But just to motivate you, remember that you're going to all of this trouble for your work to not load up and for you to not screw it up at the last minute. So keep that in mind and you should do just fine. That was the last of the tips. However, there is a little catch to every one of them. Like anything else in life, your battle against procrastination will only go smoothly if you put your time and commitment into it. So all the best in your efforts, stay strong and goodbye.